pre-purchase inspection reports. Now, I've talked about this before on Facebook Live. We've written new, probably a couple of newsletters over the years about this matter, but we keep getting questions about it. I, I ran a, a CPD compulsory webinar this morning for one of the franchise groups, and we, did, we discussed it there. So, you know, we were, we were talking about material fact, we were talking about disclosures, we, and we, uh, you know, landed in on this one. And, I, and that and questions that we've been getting, I thought, well, I think we better have a, a bit more of a chat about it. So, you know, every agent has record keeping and disclosure requirements. You know, that's a, that's a no-brainer. And they relate, they, part of this relates to pre-purchase property inspection reports. Now, those types of reports, your pest reports, your building reports, your building inspection reports, the inspection of documents uh, under Section 182 of the Strata Schemes Management Act, under Section 184 of the Strata Schemes Management Act, uh, documents under Section 26 of the Community Lands Management Act. So, you know, they're all, you know, those strata ones are referred to as strata searches and then there's the pest and building inspections, you know. We all know about them. You know, yes, it's the, you know, the the purchaser's legal representatives, they, they have a responsibility to suggest to their client and recommend to their client that they get one of those searches. It's also fabulous practice to suggest that yourself as a, as a selling agent. But, um, you know, it's your disclosure about this is if you know when a report, if a report has been done on a property that you are selling. So you need to, if you have information about a report, you need to keep a record of that. And obviously that's just kept on the property file. Put it into your database and you need to record the date the inspection was conducted, who requested the report, who prepared the report with the, with the contact details. It does say uh, whether the report has, the, the author of the report has professional indemnity insurance and whether the report is available for pre-purchase. Well, obviously, if it's available for pre-purchase, you're going to have that as part of your sales pitch anyway, and you may well have it on the on your website, on the on the links to the property about you know how they can can actually attach that. Uh, now, the practical considerations around this that there are penalties up to four thousand four hundred dollars uh, to apply, and up to for a corporation two thousand two hundred in other cases where there's non-compliance with these record keeping and disclosure requirements. So there, there's a good reason to do it. Obviously, the better reason to be doing it is it's a good service to your client. So, and that's how you get business after business after business is about providing good services to your clients. Now, obviously the record keeping requirements come under uh, the property and stock agents regulations, uh, clause 33A, I think. And, you know, from in August, 2016, uh, you had to keep these records about uh, property inspection reports. Now, you know, and now the requirements are now part of the amendments to the, the regulations again, which were implemented back in March of 2020. So how, in, in essence, how would you as an agent know that one of those reports existed? Well, the vendor may tell you um, that a report's been done. Uh, you can, as an agent can ask the vendor if a report has been done. The vendor could ask the agent to arrange a building inspection report, a pest or a timber or a strata or any of those things, and then have that available through one of the companies that will resell those reports to prospective purchasers. You know, a prospective buyer of the property throughout your sales campaign uh, may have arranged an inspection uh, or, you know, a, a, strata, a strata search to be done. And... If it's a pest and building, you'll probably definitely know about it because you will have arranged to have the property opened on, you know, with the vendor so the pest and building inspector can actually get in and do their job. So, you know, you, there's a whole range of different ways that you may know about these. Obviously, if you don't know about it, if a strata search has been done, you don't know about it, the purchaser hasn't told you about it and the purchaser's moved on and the property's still for sale, then, you know, it's not something you can disclose. It's, you know, what you know and what you reasonably ought to know. And, you know, if you haven't been told about it and, you know, you can't reasonably have known that. So you need to keep the records of all of that. Uh, now, the, the major point on this one is when do you need to disclose it? This is a once-off disclosure, okay? So at, at the point in time when a prospective purchaser actually asks for a copy of the contract. So at that point, if you know that there has been a... Uh, uh, any type of inspection report, uh, pre-purchase inspection report, that's when you need to disclose that. 
So it's not standing at the front door and telling everyone, oh, and then there's been a report done. It's when somebody requests a contract. You know, obviously you're telling everybody if it's available for repurchase. So, you know, there's some be sensible around this, but it is def if you have the information, then you need to disclose that at the point of your purchase or what prospective purchaser are asking for a copy of the contract. So hopefully that's uh, clarified that for a few people that I know were going to watch this afternoon to, to uh, hear some more about that.